Imperfects presents a very special episode. Sit back, relax, and grab yourself your own cup of vulnerability. This is the Vulnerability House. Welcome back to the Vulnerability House. Um, It just makes me smile. The pun makes me smile. I can't help but smile when I say the pun. Anyway, guys, uh, this is the fourth time we're in the Vulnerability House and it's already been eventful. It's already been eventful. Uh, we, ha- oh, Hugh, do you want to? Do you want to? It's, it's your. It's. She's not my friend yet, but she's your friend. So I can't. Te- I don't feel comfortable <laughs> introducing her. Your, your, your friend. Well, um, the last episode we had was both beautiful and heartbreaking. Josh, our uh, used to be producer, now he's just on the podcast. Uh, my brother shared a story about how. Um, about the day he stopped being creative, I suppose, from a musical point of view. Uh, <laughs> from a musical point of view. I thought that was a judgment from you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Thanks no, very from much. A, from, a <laughs> from a writing lyrics point of view. And what a burn. What a burn. Uh, Josh, who has not been creative in years. Great to have you on the show, Josh. <laughs> um for those of you who didn't listen to Josh's episode, he, he was uh, it was a story that happened to him when he was younger and it, and it, it um, I guess, stopped him writing music basically. And the day after that, uh, in fact, in that episode, we also put the call out. We said any well-known people who'd like to come on the podcast, we, we would love to have you on. And the next day I heard from today's guest, um, who is Missy Higgins. Missy Higgins, um, thank you for joining us in the Vulnerability House. Uh, we were absolutely, um, well, we were, we were absolutely thrilled uh, to hear from you because your episode, you kicked off the whole Imperfects and it was just wonderful. And to have mm. you back for this format um, was very, very exciting, um, especially because um, I mean, the amount of people who still write to me about your episode is, um, yeah, it, it's, it's just amazing. So to have you as our first well-known guest for the Vulnerability House um, is a huge thrill. Um, now, <laughs> I don't know where to start with this one. <laughs> Let her speak. Because- <laughs> <laughs> to prove she's here. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. Well, we, we were supposed to start this an hour ago. Um, and shall I say what happened? Yeah. yeah well, I mean, we, we probably should say, I mean, you probably can tell from listening to everyone, but we're, we're all in Melbourne. So we're in lockdown when we're recording this. So um, that's why it will hopefully give some context as to what you're about to explain Missy. <clears throat> yeah, so um yeah, I was really touched by by Josh's um episode and and I thought it's just such a wonderful podcast. I listen to every episode. I love I love it. I love you guys. It always makes me smile so much listening to it and and makes and uh, and makes me feel better about um sharing things that make me feel raw and vulnerable and um I just think it's such a it's such a helpful thing to listen to and I feel like I get something out of it every time. And, um, yeah, and you put the call out. <laughs> so I thought I might as well text you because, yeah, I'm up for the challenge. I I, I like – I thought I liked being vulnerable. <laughs> and um, Maybe so it's you, just the tea. <laughs> maybe it is. <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of trouble pronouncing the name of this segment to my son when I was trying to explain to him what I was doing today. <laughs> yeah. It's the vulnerability – Vulnerability tea house. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> then you sent me these questions a couple of days ago that I could choose one from, and um, in true Missy fashion, I waited till the last minute to do my homework. So I just looked at them um, a couple of hours ago. I had to I had to get out of the house because my kids wouldn't literally would not leave me alone. I was like, I just need some me time for this. I was in the car and looking through them, and my heart just started pounding so fast and it was it, it was just so surprising like question after question I was like oh my god that's so that's so confronting and I think because of this the segment you know we're supposed to be vulnerable and 
and I I think because the, the sorry to cut in, Missy, but for everyone's context, the, the the questions are all the questions that we have on on the cards. So it's essentially because yeah. you weren't in the room, we couldn't show you the, the cards. It was all of those sort of vulnerability invoking questions. It's all so, of them, and yeah. there's um, yeah. thirty nine. 37 questions and every single one of them was like being asked the most confronting question of your life. Oh. The question that nobody need to rethink the questions. is ever going to ask you. <laughs> like It's the kind of question that a therapist would ask you and you'd pause and you go, whoa, whoa, yeah. no one's ever asked me that before. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, and it yeah. was just one after the other and I, was, and I felt my heart beating through my chest. I was like, I think I'm going to have a panic attack because it was bringing up all these all these feelings and there were so many different feelings I couldn't I couldn't figure out I couldn't figure out what I wanted to talk about because they were they were all so shameful I felt like all my answers were so shameful like oh I don't know I it, I mean you know do you love yourself no I don't feel like I love myself no way um I'm gonna cry again no. um and you know um what triggers an anxiety in you? Probably doing this fucking podcast. Um, uh, <laughs> Maybe go back to the bit um, where you were telling us how good our podcast was. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, in what part of your life do you feel lonely? Um, parenting sometimes because it's just so hard and you don't feel like you have any help sometimes and sometimes... You and your partner, oh, God, guys, oh. you and your partner are on such different levels that it feels like you're in completely different head spaces and you have different ways of parenting so you can't relate to the other person. So you feel like you're just on an island parenting by yourself next to this other guy who's parenting by himself. Mm. On on that, um, Missy, just, to, just to give you a break here because I don't want to be too intense <laughs> for you, that... I'm just going to go through them all and cry with every single <laughs> yeah. question. But you didn't have to answer all the questions. Just, I don't know if you explain it. I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't choose one. I, I, it's just, yeah. I but don't just know. So, it's but just so you like don't feel what? alone in that. I mean, yeah. we, the idea we've, we've thought about here yeah. is because you basically said to me, look, I don't feel comfortable answering these questions, which is which we totally understand. And you said, let's just talk about that. And now I feel like you're going to answer every single question. But that one you just gave an example of just there. No, I, like, like when <laughs> yeah, you, okay. when have you felt alone? Just so you don't feel alone in that answer. I had a go at this, that exact question, the first vulnerability to house. I had a go at it, and I was so upset with the way I answered it and what the answer was. We just didn't release it. Like we didn't. It was too, mm. a bit mm. the same as you. I, I called Ryan and Josh that night and said, I, "I'm so uncomfortable with what I just said there. Like I don't want that going out into the world." So there was that. But then also. Last night, Penny and I had that exact conversation that you just said then of like, we, we struggled with the kids so much last night. And then Penny walked into the study where I was sitting there just shattered after we'd failed parenting. And she said, we are on a totally different mm. page. Like we are parenting styles are completely different. I don't mm. know how this is going to work. And we are so, wow, our styles are, com our, we are coming at this from a completely different angle. And it was such a lonely feeling when she said that. So just to reiterate everything you've just said there, I feel mm. everything you just said. Because <laughs> I think when you when you get into a relationship, you think that parenting is going to bring you together because it's this project that you're taking on. And I guess it can bring you together if you are lucky enough to have the same parenting styles or if you've had the same childhood and you've had a similar, you, you've you known a similar kind of parenting. But it's it's so polarising because it's so it's so um, triggering in a way, you know, because one thing that your partner does can make you feel, think about your childhood and you can disagree with it so deeply that you start looking at your partner differently. Um, and it brings out things in you too that you didn't, um, you didn't know about yourself. Like I think it can bring out the worst in you, parenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I certainly that, that that could not resonate with me more at the moment. Um, that feeling of um, yeah, like we're finding it particularly tough at the moment with the kids. So it's just you're the other thing is you're exhausted. Like emotionally, you are absolutely exhausted. So then when you try and 
obviously we're all going to have different ways of parenting, but when you try and reconcile that each other, it can be quite, um, yeah, it can be really triggering, really triggering. Yeah, and I think um, you don't get much back a lot of the time, you know, like you imagine when you have kids they're going to be, you know, giving you so many cuddles and telling you they love you and you're going to be teaching them all of your wisdom and <laughs> they're going to be these grateful recipients. And, um, like, just the fact that my kids don't want to hear me sing, that is tell me to shut up every time I start oh. singing or play the piano. That was, I had to deal with that ages ago because that's That would be own. the thing that would get me. It's like if, if, if they're not watching my stuff and laughing, I just like, I don't know if you can stick around. Just, <laughs> That's the whole reason I had you, so that I could have little fans in the house all the time. Yeah, I want an audience <laughs> who will always love me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, you, it's, re, it's a very, very, um, it's a totally selfless thing to do. Mm. But which is very hard because and, and we're inherently not selfless. <laughs> um, so I like, I guess at some point when they become an adult, you hope that they might give you a call and say, oh, mum, shit, I'm just realising all the things you did for me. But, you know, that may very well never happen. So you've got to, you've got to bring them up not expecting to get any, anything back like that. It's got to, you've got to accept that you're doing this for another reason. You're doing this to bring a good human into the world, to try and create a good human. It's nothing about you. You might not get anything back. You should try and just get grat- gratification out of the fact that, you know, you're keeping something alive and you're, you, you know, you're trying your hardest not to turn them into an arsehole. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it can feel very, very thankless. I mean, just like on a nightly basis, they, they just they throw away the food that I eat them, say it's disgusting, <laughs> shout at me to get them something else and... Um, they shout at me when I tell them that they, you know, need to eat vegetables or when they can't, or they can't watch TV or it's just, yeah, it's, I'm finding it really hard. I mean, we're in lockdown. So my emotions mm-hmm. about parenting are like, it's really extreme yeah. at the moment. Yeah. But, um, yeah, sometimes it's just, and I think on top of that, the relationship with your partner suffering because of it is the hardest thing. Um, mm. I mean, yeah, Dan and I absolutely love each other, but sometimes we can't stand to be around each other because of because of the stress of the kids. I, th- I think that's it, you know, like raising mm-hmm. two little humans together um, that are little whirlwinds that are always fighting with each other and shouting at each other. <laughs> it's very, it's just not a very romantic atmosphere, let's put it that way. Um, so that is something that you grapple with, you know, that kind of, that loss of that beautiful connection that you had before you had kids. It certainly heightens it emotionally when you know that you actually can't leave for the next two weeks or however long we're going to be in this situation for in Melbourne. Yeah. That- I know. I feel like just sending out an SOS, like, help. Mm. <laughs> That's what I had that feeling this morning, like. But there's no, you can't really get any help at the moment, which is, yeah, that makes mm. it harder. There yeah. must be so many, so many families at the moment that are just really struggling to be stuck in a house with each other. Yeah. And it can be, it can be so different every day. I mean, there are moments throughout that you can have beautiful moments throughout the day, you know, like the kids and I were um, having a dance party to the Ghostbusters theme song over and over again this morning, just had it on repeat. They were both in the nude, like jumping on the couch and and doing twirls and and dancing and it was so, so beautiful. But then, you know, I then this, this afternoon one of them had a, I had a meltdown because he wanted to do something and I was telling him he couldn't and and then, you know, suddenly your kids hate you and you're the bad guy and it's just, it's so full on. It's so intense yeah. having having that, having to go through all these things with these little humans every day. It's like having two very emotionally unstable people living in your house at all times and you cannot predict where what they're going to do. So, so you've definitely played them the special too, though. They have heard that. 
Fuck. <laughs> my, my son actually told me that he hated that song the other day. Well, and I said to him, do you he's know crazy. how popular that song is, Sammy? <laughs> you are the only one who doesn't like it. <laughs> oh, Sammy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Missy. I mean, I haven't played them. I haven't played them your rendition of the special two, though, Ryan. Maybe that's a problem. Yeah. Maybe that's where I've gone wrong. Oh, <laughs> uh, we. I mean, it's it seems strange that we still haven't done that duet yet. Doesn't? Do you often? Do, I often yeah, think that. Yeah, yeah. I often think that's I think really that, weird. That's maybe one of the things that was making me so emotional. This uh, morning, thinking yeah. about that. Yeah. We hadn't done it yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just really busy, Missy, so I haven't, you know, found time for the schedule. You're in so. demand. I get it. You're in demand. <laughs> but no, I, I, I mean, like, a... sorry, Hugh, yeah. No, I was just saying, I think that's just because of lockdown. I'm sure it would have happened if it wasn't for lockdown. That would I'm be sure it. you guys would have made this happen. <laughs> yeah, that's Absolutely. probably. Yeah. We've got a TikTok duet going. <laughs> no, well, we do, <laughs> we do, like, I mean, it is amazing, Missy, that you've come because we were on, we were on this Zoom and, you know, we were, you were going to answer one of the questions and just to put it in perspective for everyone i mean it's it's amazing you sort of said that you're in you're crying and all i mean it's our fault we've mm. sent you like a thousand triggers i was crying document. i reckon for a good 45 minutes there oh. i've got about 20 um uh screwed up bunches of toilet paper with oh. all my snot and tears in them all over the floor well i mean that's and, just incredible and nobody knows nobody in my house knows that this has been going on I've just they just think that I've been working because I couldn't face anyone because I didn't it brought up so many different feelings of yeah like I said before just very confronting feelings of shame and and the realization that I don't love myself enough and um I am embarrassed about this or that and I don't want to admit this or that to people and I'm in general very scared of people knowing exactly what I'm like or who I am, you know, because you, as much as I like to think that I put out a, a genuine um, mm. representation of myself, it's it's still a persona. It's always going to be because mm. you really can't afford to be exactly who you are in the public eye. I try mm. to be as close as close to who I am as possible, but it's still nowhere near who mm. I am because there are things that if you put them out there, you, you, you're you you're throwing yourself to the lions. Yeah, like yeah. it's, you, you know that it's not going to do you any good and you know that it's going to get misconstrued or mm. um, it's going to be abused. And, totally. yeah, you can't, the, the, the honest truth is that you, you do have to protect yourself sometimes a little bit. And I, I sometimes I watch these, these younger performers kind of putting themselves out there in, in certain ways and I just go, Oh oh, they've gotta they've gotta be careful, you know. They've gotta mm. they've gotta they've gotta look after themselves a little bit better than that because there's certain things that if you put them out there people are gonna abuse that. And I'm not really even thinking of anything specific, but um I don't know. I Are you talking about I'm I'm are you talking about like Young like artists who are on social media and they just share their every yeah. thought and mm. I think so yeah. There's this. I, I mean, I'm an. It's it's funny because I'm an advocate for being as open and honest as possible. But um, I don't know. I think I think you've also got to be aware of the kind of things that people can can take and mm. misconstrue and and use against you. So I think that's. I think that's why I've I've always tried to um, have a private life mm. as much as possible, and and I I always look at these people who are trying to make their private lives as public as possible, and I think that's that's going to come back to Bad, yeah, yeah. haunt you, yeah. And Which then, is, and then we send you thirty seven questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about your private life. Yeah. So it was, it was. That's the thing. It was a. Mi- it was mixed feelings because I was going, yeah, I should talk about this and I should talk about that, and and that's I think why I was so upset because I I I realised that I didn't trust people. I didn't trust mm. the pu- the general public, and and I don't think I'm strong enough to to be able to withstand. Um, uh, I guess any sort of negative feedback because I'm so sensitive, mm-hmm. and I hate 
reading anything um, mm. critical of, of myself online because it's and you know it's the only thing very, you remember. Yeah, that's very human. I mean, I don't think our brains were designed to to withstand you know this whole new world of having all this feedback coming back to us and all these people's opinions and thoughts. I don't think mm. we were designed to be able to cope with that. And all of a sudden, with the way the internet is, the way the world is, that's kind of the space we're in now. So I think it's a very normal, that's a very normal way to be, I, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah I think so. But I, I still find myself going, I'm just going to have a look because I'm sure people have said really nice things. <laughs> and then I'm just like <laughs> strolling through all the comments going, Ah, oh, yep. They think I'm amazing. They think I'm amazing. Oh, it's more people think I'm amazing, and then and then a, a negative thing comes up, and I just stop on it, and I read I read it over and over again, and I really um, and I'm like, they're right. They're totally right. And I realize, oh, I'm I was looking for the truth. I was scrolling past all those things because um, I don't think they're the truth, and I was looking mm. for someone who was going to tell me that I'm bullshit, and. That's what I really wanted. Wow. Well, that's yeah. – I find that very interesting. Confirmation of oh, – Sorry, Josh. I, I just find that very interesting for a couple of reasons. What, one of them is that just before just before my book came out, I had this almighty panic that all of a sudden everyone was going to know everything and I was going to be reading opinions about myself. And I got – and I called you – and we caught up and I said, what are you, not that I ever, not that I thought I'd be as well known as Missy Higgins, but just, I, I was quite anxious with what to do with people's opinions. And you said to me, you just don't read anything. You don't read anything. I know, reviews. I know. That's what I tell people to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were saying because that's what I'm it works for you. <laughs> But usually I don't. But occasionally uh, I went on an uh, Undo's um, show recently. Yeah. And... I was getting so many beautiful texts from people saying, oh, I love the episode, you know, you were just so open and honest and blah, 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 like really lovely things. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll read the comments on the Instagram post because these are going to make me feel really good about myself. Mm. <laughs> and so that's what I did. And it was a mistake because, like I said, there was one negative thing and then that, you know, sends you into a downward spiral because you, that's the one thing that you believe about yourself that you were – I was just looking for validation, you know, that I was mm. a piece of shit. Um, I, mean, I think people, I, I reckon people would be shocked to hear that you would think that of your, think that of yourself from reading like a comment because everyone gets those comments in some whatever form, and I think people yeah. would be shocked to 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 hear you say that, even though you're just a person like everyone else. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I think if if someone came up to you and said those things to your face, you'd be devastated as as well. Well, so there's something there's about not- like if they said it to your face where it would seem so bizarre that maybe you wouldn't take it you'd seriously. It yeah. You'd be like, that person's crazy. Who does that? Yeah. But yeah. sometimes, yeah, and you would probably reason- see that they were a bit unhinged. Yeah. <laughs> as well. yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can't see the person behind the comment. Yeah, it's probably. <laughs> You know they probably look, they probably are somewhat unhinged yeah. in whatever way you know and but we don't get to we don't get to make that dis, we don't get to distinguish the different comments of the different people who write comments. No, we assume all the good comments are people we'd want us to be our best friends because they're legends. Who yeah, have good opinions. and they're probably they're, they're probably just as unhinged as the yeah, people maybe. that are writing the, the negative comments. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a um. I I think. This is like I've done a bit of work on this with my psychologist, Missy, this exact thing of like I think I said to her, I want to care less about what people think because like I get really hurt by the negative stuff. And mm. she said, I, I think that's what has helped make the Resilience Project really successful, that you feel like you do feel what people feel. It does matter to you what people think. And you've mm. adjusted yourself. You've created this thing based on how people think and feel and and, and that's sort of what makes you very much who you are as well. Like you do care what people think. I think it's a really nice thing because for a while I was like, ah, I don't want to feel this bad stuff and I want to turn that down. But she sort of explained to me that I think she said, I'd hate to turn that, you know, the part of you that cares yeah. what people think. If I turn down the negative bit, I've got to turn down the positive bit as well. You can't just have it. Yeah, because that's the empathetic side of your personality. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say, and you said it yeah. in one second. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't switch off your empathy, in other words. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is, um, yeah, I, we really appreciate you doing this because I, 
I mean, one of the reasons is when you sort of messaged me and said, look, I'm not sure I can do this. I, Ryan, Josh and I are thinking, well, maybe I'll do one. And I was looking through the questions thinking, right, I'll answer this. And I was looking at it going, shit, these really are full on. Like, I don't know if <laughs> I had one answer. I was like, I could do this one. I called Penny and said, Penny, what do you think if I answer this? Because it involves you. She said, no, no way you're doing that. And I went, yeah, actually, what am I thinking about? I'm not going to talk about that. Did you, yeah, explain well, that was- did, did you explain to her that it's a vulnerability house? Like you did tell I- her that... <laughs> 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 didn't change your um, mind. <laughs> that was it. That, I think that was that was the thing for me. Is I I saw one of the questions and I didn't know whether I should talk about it or not. And I wanted to talk to Dan about it because I wanted because he he knows about it. And I wanted to talk to him about whether I should. He thought it was a good idea for me to talk about it. And. I just he just wasn't there, and then when he was there, that he that he had to might he had to be with the kids because the kids are so, and so that triggered this thing of like I just can't even talk to my partner anymore about you know about the things that matter. So that's what brought all that emotion up when I was talking to you guys. Like, but I you know they're your wingman, and when when you don't have them, it's it's very um it's very hard to get through it all. This has gone from. <laughs> yeah, we're so excited to chat to you again. And then we just could not have felt, talk about shame, could not have felt worse for triggering all this stuff with all the questions we sent you. And we are definitely going to rethink the way we do this vulnerability tea house with Jess. <laughs> um, or just make sure someone's very emotionally stable before you send those <laughs> hardcore questions to them. Do you know, the funny thing is, guys, I don't know if you know this, but I said, one of the texts that I sent to Hugh about an hour ago when I was in the middle of my fits of crying was, um, one thing this has made me realise is that I probably need to see a therapist. Oh. And he's like, I know someone, and he sent me the the contacts of this lady, and I just emailed her then, and I was like, I'm, I'm, I, it has come to my attention that I need to see somebody about some things. So um, I've li- I literally just emailed this oh, wow. therapist before that's talking been, to you guys wow. now. Well, hopefully She's then wonderful. that's that's so. that's a silver lining. Hopefully, if that. Works yeah. Out. yeah. Oh, Missy. Yeah. I mean, no, no. It's all. It's all good. It's not. I mean, I'm not traumatized or anything. But I just. I'm so surprised because, you know, you don't realize how you lock yourself up on a daily mm-hmm. basis. I guess just to survive. Just all these little things, and then I felt like every question just kind of cracked my chest open a little bit more. Um, and I think it's probably ultimately a good thing. It's just, yeah. It's just. Confronting, yeah, and hard, hard to kind of deal with at first. But it always feels good after a big cry. Mm. It does. Well, well I mean, sure we does. we stupidly designed the vulnerability house to be like just to like a fun in between episode between the big episodes. <laughs> and so, oh, that'll be good. Good, you know, we can just like tell a story and people can be vulnerable and and that will be that will be a slightly different episode. And but I think like. While this is whatever the vulnerability house is, we've only done three. Like whatever we thought that was going to be, this has clearly been a really different type of episode than we have done in the other ones. But I just don't. You just don't get much more vulnerable. And and I think you. And I think. And I and thank you, Missy, because I I think you say, you said earlier that. Um, and I understand what you mean, like not wanting to show all of yourself to people and not wanting, you know, being mm. careful what you show. But, you know, we we go on and on on this podcast about like the power of vulnerability and what the Brene Browns of the world say and Ben Crow and about how important it is and how much it does connect you with people when you do it. And I just know, like, I just know that people will, this will only be great for people who know you or don't know you and will just feel like you're you're flawed. Of course you are. But that's good. Like that's it like that's I think mm. that's a like to me if I if I had have just known like known of you like I did before we did this podcast. You know, we didn't know each other and we didn't before today. But I but I love your music so much and and have done for such a long time. And I guess like oh, listening to the you. lyrics um, of that, then you can kind of get a sense of someone's life and feelings. But because music is performed with such confidence, mm. 
and because it's so that the the end product is so polished um you don't get a true sense of where that's coming from and i think and i think now knowing yeah. just even hearing you talk today is is so powerful um and beautiful but i mm. i i i i'm very very thankful that you you did come on today and and talk because it's just Oh, I just, I don't know if this is appropriate to say, but I love you even more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Missy, so oh, much. Thanks, guys. I'm so glad we got to talk. Yeah. I, yeah. Incredible. I, um, there wasn't, it, I, it definitely wasn't structured like I'm, I'm sure you hoped it would have been structured, but it was, all, I was a bit of a mess. So we got there eventually. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. If we could just yeah, do that imagine. all one more time, just a bit more energy, that would be great. <laughs> oh, shit, we weren't recording. Are you about to tell me we weren't recording? <laughs> uh, thank you, Missy, and thank you, everyone, for, for joining us in okay. the Vulnerability House again. We didn't even have tea. I mean, it was very off-brand for the Vulnerability House. Didn't even drink tea. <laughs> I, I, I was drinking miso soup, which is which is so oh, well, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Missy. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks, we really Missy. appreciate All it. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Cool. Yes. Bye.